Hi guys, so in this video I just wanted to use um, this program SageMath to uh, to kind of demonstrate like what might happen um, when you're trying to calculate the QR factorization of a matrix. Okay. Um, you can do similar things in um, Python with a certain with a package and you could of course do it in MATLAB and of course any of those things they could just compute the Q, like there's functions which just compute the QR factorization but um, I just wanted to go through it step by step and, and see what happens okay so we'll start by just um, writing down some 4x4 matrix with real entries let's call it A and our goal is to um, multiply A by householder transformations and, until it's upper triangular okay and if we can do that then our upper triangular matrix will be R well upper triangular with um, positive entries on the diagonal our matrix will be R and then the we collect all the um, orthogonal matrices we use and multiply them all together we get Q okay so um, we start with the first column of a matrix A um, to do that I just take my matrix and do dot column 0 so I look for column 0 um, the numbering of these things is according to Python, which means like the first thing is zero, index zero. Okay, I don't want to worry about it too much, but there we go. So that's my first column. And now I make a vector whose first entry is the norm of my first column. So I do a1.norm and put it in a vector, and the rest are zeros. That gives me this vector. So a1 has norm 0.76 about. Okay. Now I do the difference of my vector V minus A1, and I get W. And this is the vector I'm going to use for the householder transformation. Okay. And for my householder transformation, I do the 4x4 four four identity, subtract 2 times, and now I'm doing W, W transpose over W transpose W. The reason why I have all this column in a row, I have to, like, when I, if I do W times W, Sage will assume that I'm doing the dot product. So if I want to do W, W transpose, I think I need to do the W as a column times W as a row. So it'll be W, W transpose. Okay, I'm sure there's a cleaner way to do that, but anyways. So, and then here's my U. Okay. So this is a, this is a matrix and what should happen is that if I do u times a1, I should get my vector v, uh, a vector with 0.76 in the first entry and all zeros. In other words, I will have like uh, eliminated all the um, entries below the first entry. Okay, let's make sure I ran that piece of part of the thing. Okay. And now let's see what happens when I take my matrix A and multiply it by U. So I do U times A. Yeah, I get um, a bunch of zeros below the first entry. You know, I mean, assuming that 10 to the minus 18 is like close enough to zero, right? Okay. Now to continue, I want to take the lower three by three part of my matrix A or A1, and I want to row reduce that, except not row reduce, I want to like use householder transformations. So let's just focus on that lower three by three part. Um, so again, the index one means the second column. So I'm looking at, I'm looking for the, um, the last three um, columns in the last three rows with this. I get my matrix and I call that B. So this is this this area here, this lower three by three part. Now I want to do the same process that I did above, but just now on this three by three matrix. So I look at the first column of a matrix. 
I make a vector who, which has this column, the column's norm as its first entry and all the rest zeros, and I do my householder transformation with W. So here's my matri my vector V, and then this is V minus, V minus, well, this vector I've called B2. Okay. And now I do my householder transformation, 3 by 3 identity minus 2 times WW transpose over W transpose W, and I call that U1. And then I'm going to look at, so this is U1, the first three. And U1 times B is this matrix. And yes, I have 10 to the minus 16 and 0. And, you know, we're trying to row reduce, kind of. So um, I've eliminated all the, non all, all the entries below my first entry. Okay. But instead of doing like regular row reduction, I've done a reflection. Okay, so that's U1 times B. Okay, now I want to, um, I want to put my three by three U1, I want to put it into a four by four unitary ma matrix. So to do that, I take um, a matrix with a one, like one, in the top left and my matrix U1 in the bottom right and it's just a block diagonal matrix so a 1 by uh, and then the second part is U1 um, in class we might call this 1 plus with a circle U1 okay and I just call that U1 again Okay, so looking good so far. Now let's just check what is U1 times A. It should be, so these, so below the first entry is 0, 0, 0, and then below um, the 2, 2 entry is 0, 0. Okay, now I'm left with reducing this 2 by 2 matrix over here. So let's look at the 2 by 2 matrix. So we go from 2 to 4, 2 to 4, get this 2 by 2. Oh, and I have to run this. Okay, this is my two by two matrix. I look for the first column. I find the norm of that column. I do V minus my column, so V minus B3 here. I do identity minus two times WW transpose over W transpose W. I, so that gives me a unitary or a orthogonal matrix and I put that in a block diagonal matrix with the identity. Did I run that? Yes. Okay. So here's my matrix U2, and this 2 by 2 matrix is the householder transformation for this 2 by 2 matrix. Okay. And then now look what happens if I do, if I start with A and then multiply by U and then multiply by U1 and then multiply by U2, I get this. Okay, in other words, I get my um, R's on the diagonal. Everything below the diagonal is zero. Again, let's suspend your disbelief. 10 to the minus 16 is really zero. Let's pretend. And here, well, there's a little slight problem. We have a minus sign here. We can fix that quick. We can, uh, let's say uh, U3 is just gonna be um, three by three identity matrix with um, a matrix that is a one by one So let's so let's take that to be U three and then let's take R to be U three times R. And then see what R is now. 
okay let's see if that fixes it so here's my um u3 is just multiply um the last column by negative one or i guess i should say the last row by negative one okay and then what happens with r here's r and yes now i really have um my diagonal entries are positive everything below the diagonal is zero this is really an r from the qr factorization and what's q q is here this is really uh, an orthogonal matrix and then what's qr minus a well it should be zero we see everything is pretty close to zero okay so we have successfully performed our qr factorization it took like you know many times it took a lot longer than it would have been done by the computer but that's okay okay um anyways thank you for watching i hope that um seeing that maybe cleared some things up okay bye